Good afternoon, Dan from Houndar. Good afternoon. Roisono, welcome back. Uh, many of you, welcome back because you were here for the the first event of the at the Tronos Fringe Festival this morning when we had some guerrilla poetry and we took the streets. Um, to start our workshop this morning, we worked with a particular poet's uh, uh, writing, their creative output. And the work that we started with was from Frika Raiha. Frika is one of the residents at the Coracle International Literary Residency, hosted by Cultivira and taking place here in, in Tronos for three weeks. And an important part of that residency is for us all to come together and have this literary festival. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about, about Frika. Um, he is a very well-published poet. He comes from Stockholm originally. He is published in, he has a couple of volumes published in English and about a dozen volumes published in, in Swedish. And he's currently, as part of the residency, translating one of his Swedish collections into English. Um, but I think really the person who can tell you the most about his own particular passion for words and within the context of today, the Rainbow Day, the first day of the festival, I'll give you a free care. Uh -huh. Hi! Uh, I'm going to do this talk in English, so um, if I lost, lose my words or, or stutter or yeah, like that. Um, it's because it's my second language and um, I'm not very used to doing lectures in English. Uh, and I brought my pen to um, to speed edit during the reading because this is the first draft of my translation of my book Nomos. Ah, oh, really? Um, and I uh, haven't had a chance to read it. Uh, and when I opened the page that I wanted to read uh, from today, uh, I started out with changing something, so if I change something during my reading, don't be alarmed. It's just the creative process happening live. Uh, uh, Dominic is correcting me, um, having published about a dozen um, collections of poetry, about 15 in Swedish. Normos came out 2012, and it's some kind of um, childhood um, recollection where I tried to um, well, it was a, a cathars catharsic project. Um, I started um, uh, a university in, in Lund, where I grew up. Uh, started a course there in creative writing. That was two years. And then I, I came back and, and did a master's as well. Um, and Lund is uh, a town like it, probably most of most of us with a bad childhood um, doesn't really uh, well the the, um, the city had uh, gave me a bad vibe and and, uh, and I had angst for the first months or so and then I told myself if I have if I if I am going to do this education I have to write about Lund so I did and it turned out to be this 100-page poem um, about growing up and and uh, hating everything, uh, especially Dun. Uh, but uh, another thing that, that that struck me while I was editing this collection of poems was um, I had to revise. Um, the story about how I, how I started writing. Um, I've always, like for the last 10 years, I've always said, well, it started with me being 16 and, and sitting in my uh, friend's one room apartment. Uh, and she gave me this friend book to, to sign and, and say something about myself. And I wrote a poem and I was like, oh my God, I wrote a poem. And, and the poem struck me like, um, uh, something that I could continue doing but after translating this which was a very painful process um, uh, it occurred to me that, that it wasn't this poem that got my writing started 
It was writing letters. I wrote a lot of letters. This was a really long time ago when we still used paper, <laughs> and not emails or, or text messages. Uh, but I'll, I'll try to read some of the poems from that particular era. Um, and then I should do some more talking and you can ask questions. You can always interrupt me, um, even mid-poem. Um, but that, that's not the correct word. We don't know what you mean. So I usually don't know what I mean. Um, after the, this collection was published and, and um, got a good, lot of pretty good reviews saying um, I was trying to describe my childhood using only nouns, which is, bless you. Uh, have I infected you? I have a fever and yeah, <laughs> you're allergic to poetry or me. <laughs> I'm allergic to me as well. Uh, now I'll, I'll stop talking and, and try to read poem. Um, this is from the chapter Kjempagranden 15b in Lund. Uh, but the poem I'm going to read um, is called Krono Bergsgatan 44 Hardskrona. You were there as the first. You proposed. I ran away. Ran to you because you kissed me in your bed. Because you were the first. Because your bed broke underneath us. Because no one else saw us skating. No, just you. And I played dead. I was passive and thrown out, superior, repositioned, redirected, unwelcome. I was down in a cellar behind hatches, hidden. I threw your key at a sink at Karlhilsgatan. You exchanged your hair with me, wasted postage, didn't waste postage. In this it crawled with minor and inter and contextual quotes enhanced by a child's scribblings. Together we were both young and younger for each other, into each other. The kitchen at Kjempagranden 15b, Lund. A geography of Lund, struggling is undelusional, a singularity. Carrots, steaks, potatoes, steaks. I could eat cheese for a while. Cold rice with cold bayonets. Soy pieces from frigs, like I really, never really appreciated my mother's attempts at they fell with me, with pizza, with an extreme amount of peppers. Once I had him over from Malmö, salami. Once again, we sheeted our way into the student's pub, but that's another story. We carried all this chocolate home, that's a whole other story. It's about for a novel. We shared it between us. You can't outgrow your achievements. My hair was striped, downscaled. I searched for your tangled blonde locks over there, but that was something I could not bring myself to do, to speak. The eyes I missed, it was piss. It was downturned lights and soft toilet paper on a roll, stuck as stickers as if found on the ground. A shared room. It was tar. It was telephone. It was those pieces of me stuck onto others. It was debuts, gaps, conglomerations. I remember garments I wore. I cut myself deeply. I cut myself into you. The radio cut out the silence with its Danish roots torn from ether. It's the only thing I now miss from the west coast of Skåne. I built walls, threads from bookshelves, learned that bookshelves shielded against the world, like clothes, blinds, smells, and looks. The words interpreted from the outside and in and out again. The fingers hurt, became a metaphor for the power to act. 
the vehicle was the railway of the train, the passing of time. So I wrote a lot of letters um, to this person living in Karlskrona. And she wrote a lot of letters to me. And um, it ended very badly, as love does sometimes. Um, and I got this question, I think it was, I think it was today, I can't remember, I think it's the fever, um, uh, that spooks my memory. Um, if I write love poetry, and I was like, no, nah, because I'm a political poet and I don't write love, write love poetry. And then I started looking into my manuscript and it was like all love poetry. So I do write, or have written, a lot of love poetry. Um, yeah, now I remember. Uh, I was on the train this morning um, um, from a cow town called Kopparberg, which is about 30 kilometers north of here. Um, and I met this Afghan judge. He was former judge, uh, thrown out oh, or fled the country in 2008, I think. Now, live, she, now she lives in Manchester. And she was here to, um, to visit a friend. And she was kind of lost, and, and, and I was kind of lost. And we sat there on the, uh, on the train station, jabbering about labor and, uh, and the Swedish Nazi party, and well, a lot of those things. And, and she asked me Do, if I write love poetry. Uh, I'm going to re read some more love poetry um, before it's too late. Well, it's never too late for love poetry. Uh, and then I'm going to read some uh, some dark shit about uh, abuse. So, uh, well, I, think, I don't know. Um, these poems are called um, uh, Sankt Hans Grem, the 31A Lund. The kitchen closed to the hallway, which closed back to the living room. Buttons and chain like zip locks over rugs and gone buses and walks home with sense of others over my aching parts. On the floor, in all the rooms, in all the corners, in all the nooks in the laundry room. One home in, done a blue sauce over the pasta again. Robin Hood, socialism, couches. The ideals, like the dreams, the warmth, salt in the eyes, the eyes, over and under all these fantastic stories. The table was round, a newspaper. One corner was already taken. He's gone now. At least he was whole, like at Gustafsson. Your bedroom, a tightly wound feather towards the will to join, against the will to step out of myself, that which you cannot make a scene out of. And inside you, I still love by trying to subdue myself. Myself, I do not know how it's done. Did we ever invent that language that you spoke of? You taught me to say I, by being a cloud in pants together, by showering often. Did I ever stay in that, in all of that around you? You said, if I plan on staying here, then teach me how to occupy room to time. Your letters. The young man of Botticelli adopted in print instead of postcards displaying only a view. You were disappointed. It manifested disease upon you. It always did. We cleansed our contradictions with sand and allowed our words to be grandoise. Is that a word, grandoise? It sounded like dark. Oh, well, sorry. 
um, well, we allowed our words to be grand so that they could breathe properly. Grandiose. Grandiose, yeah, sorry. That's, that's the problem about reading yeah. uh, more than, than talking. So. But I don't know if they could do that anyway. Words like, I love you, like across waters. You talk to me about your nightmares, about how love could revolutionize the institutions, that you wanted to come one day, and then you did. Lund City. I'm there in a photography depicting a square with a black flag, a clarity free from even surface around with a certain condescentment. <laughs> <laughs> Cobblestones, collections, collecting with a certain condescentment. Condescentment? Like we're looking down at you. Condescending, yeah. But in, in another form. Yeah. Made up form, perhaps. Elected with an unpaid membership fee, the resources stopped proceeding where the will as something of its own ended. The paranormal Socrat so I never said that word out loud. <laughs> the paranormal Socrate. Yeah. Withered between the fields of visions on how to escape. One dreams of a better tomorrow, one dreams of labor, one dreams of visions on how to escape. One works your way in from the dream. I could not repay you for, I could no longer hold on to you, to me, to anything at all. I had to. Every word turns to lies in the end. It is the order of things, the time, how memory doesn't work according to specification, how the manual turns into a piece of paper. The streets leaned inwards, the deafening of bus and bicycle in traffic, Hard by a sporet, like a dashed line, a flow free from any obstacle. The echo of eyes towards the self sensitivity or the lack thereof. Waiting, the network of buses, no matter the weather, was to walk home, home. I always returned home those days. So it was actually a very long time ago. The eyes quickly turned. Associates of sadistic truth, lie to me, please lie to me, like hunger when starving, like white, like anathemed. Remember that I embraced an anatheme, prefer out in, towards out, between ciphers and shiftings, aboard in the game rather. So that was love poetry. Um, it's called Ru Bigatan Ten. Swiss roll. Pickled herring in the sea, the beer, and two pounds of meatballs in your father's leather couch. We broke and entered, condemned, and since long abandoned houses and occupied ruins. Industry got them that attracted the sex workers, the buyers, the violence, and leather of factories. I found a cassette with a recording of Patti Smith, and I learned that I could do anything I want. These houses have been demolished by now, into malls, into nothing. From nothing to Montana black and curves and sketches. We carried concealed weapons, we did too. I remember garments you wore. I remember garments I wore. Flung noses cut. Like noses cut through the door of the students' pub. Lies, charm, other people's lives. It was several times in benevolence. 
was one in a long row of conflicts and dog bites, about hate, about dreams of a better tomorrow, about being in conflict with the conflict. Um, I guess I am, was a wild child uh, when I was uh, a teenager, all punk rocky and all, I can do that myself, uh, I don't care, so um, when I grew up uh, and turned into an adult, um, uh, that really never changed. Still very angry, um, and most of my my um, later and uh, work after this one is very political work um, with a critique of language as such and uh, the. Um, Swedish state, and the Swedish state gives me money to, to do that kind of work, which is brilliant. Um, but I mentioned the address Karl Hilsgatan 13, uh, and that is also a poem in this collection. Uh, the, there is a lot of those kind of hints. Uh, that I uh, this is kind of this book kind of wrote itself. I I, um, I tried to to um, to uh, listen to my creative teachers, creative writing teachers' advice about dramatic curves and, and uh, placement of uh, key persons and, and, uh, and things, but that never worked for me. Uh, this collection has a lot of repetition and a lot of um, things that some kind of meta level where, where it all kind of merges. Every poem um, has some uh, connection to any of the other poems. So it, it, Kind of sticks together like a chain or or a fishing net. Fishing net's probably the better metaphor. Carl Hitzgatan 13. The apartment wasn't just silver fish, not just loneliness and fried chicken. At some point there was love. One could say it lay dormant. Resting in projection, weeping and falling asleep while on the phone. Those who ended are more than promising and other imprudence. For this, there is regret. I could never be whole. Often it was in the middle of the night, the night always, without a doubt, led to new nights, new back seats, new mattresses. It rested out of its context. It happened all the time, rested like an imagined turning point of need. Often, it was in the middle of the night, long blue we learning. The smoke slipped through our hands towards God. Um, uh, maybe I'll just do some, a few more poems, and then you can tomatoes or ask questions or answer your text emails. Uh, I tried writing about writing with this book also, um, which is kind of very 20th century. Um, and, um, I tried for a long time to find a, a form to write about the uh, writing. And um, I think the, the character Candide, I don't know what to say in English, Candide, it's an English word for hidden well. 
Um, but uh, can be the person as a verb, even uh, sincere and true. It's a poem about literature, or poetry, or writing poetry. It had its own room, with amphetamine lit from a toilet seat, with howls from abysmal cavities and internal peacocks. There it played public service radio channel 2 and descended into its own then it turned off that art music and descended into its own. It stood there in front of a movie theater, in front of a camera, and searched among them their memories between copy repetitions of the tape recorder. Quote, a work of art is not a work of art until it has been duplicated. I remember my first text. Since then, I have ceased talking to myself. This is what I mean uh, with the poem and the story about my writing. So, oh, and it all started with this poem, but it didn't, so this, this is a lie. This is a lie. I'll do it again. I remember my first text, which shows lie. Since then, I've ceased talking to myself, which is probably also a lie. You cannot outgrow your achievements. I'm only talking to myself. You made me say I, the poetics were under strewed and lifted skirts. My gate fell out onto the street, and I missed the window. Literature is an unpaid and disciplined labor alone, like recycling paper, like red wine, needles, like defiance. I ne never understood that. Now, as from the stage manifest, from filter grounded in manifest ink, panic. So, uh, turned out to be some kind of meta level of this as well. Sorry about that. Um, During my, my early um, adulthood, uh, I couldn't support myself. I was ill and too, um, too much of an alcoholic. And um, I had to live insight into my disease so that I could uh, ask for help. Uh, that was. I did that when I was about 30. Uh, I went to shrink and I said, I drink a lot. And then she said, well, you're angry at your grandfather. And I said, oh, yeah, I'm angry at my grandfather and my mother and my father. And then it like, kind of like sipped away. Um, so a lot of these poems probably also me being very angry with my mother and my grandfather. Uh, in my thought, well, a lot of anger, not very constructive. Um, but during these years, uh, I was on welfare because there's more alternative income from poor conditions and can't work and don't want to live in the street. Uh, so I wrote a poem called Social Welfare, uh, which is part of the Chapter Easter Gotham 23A Malmö. A pleading for the right to live. That with your humble ligaments bind. Never know to never know. Will I be able to eat another meal? That through the taxation of goods give your assets back to the source to contribute to the gross domestic product. The social benefits have never kept pace with the agreed upon index curve. Nothing ever gets any cheaper behind expense 
afterwards, far behind, appointment, stigma, singular, travel, prohibitions, to cross out, alongside a sidewalk, a fence, a huge saturation with, to solemnly swear while naming the affidavit, obesity, it carried its own. Violence is a filth we have to spread, feel it all clean. Act number, change of service officer, change of identification code, change of paper quality, change of form, a form for the change of forms, yellow, pink, white, ink, copy, account for, account for nothing, a change of meeting room without notice, unrendering, locked room, brainwork, as a symptom.